If you've got a budget of around three to 400 quid to blow on your next budget smartphone, well, the great news is you can get some very sexy tech for that cash indeed in 2021. We're talking OLED screens, awesome cameras, proper smooth gaming smarts, and a bit of 5G action if you fancy some of that, all for less than half the price of a Samsung S21 or an iPhone or any of those posh premium efforts. So here's my personal pick of the very best budget smartphones that you can bag for yourself for under £400 in 2021. And I've had my personal sim slapped inside of all of them. You can check out my full in-depth reviews right here on Techspert if you want to know more. And I've also rounded up my favourite budget phones under £300 and £200 if you find you got a little bit less cash to spend. And for more on the latest budget phones, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. And enough waffle, let's get on with it. Now we absolutely have to start with Google's Pixel 4a, which is easily the best camera phone that you'll find at around this £350 price point. You've got that same primary sensor as the Billy Big Bollocks Pixel 5 flagship phone, so you can capture great looking photos at any time of the day. You're only really missing out on that ultra wide angle lens with this cheaper phone, which is no big whoop. And Google, God bless it, has gone and kicked that tiresome trend of massive smartphones right in the ruddy crotch. The Pixel 4a is a pocket pleasing 5.8 inches, definitely one of the most miniature smartphones you'll find in 2021, and it means it's an absolute joy to use one handed, especially if you've got distressingly stubby fingers like me. Packed into that dinky plastic frame is the Snapdragon 730G chipset, which handles everything, including gaming, without a grumble. The OLED screen is a stunner, and yeah, it is quite small, but I'll still happily watch a whole flick on this thing, no worries. And as this is a Google blow, you do of course get a nice stock version of that Android OS with a couple of bonus exclusive Pixel features chucked in there just to sweeten the deal, and a guarantee of at least a couple of years of OS and security updates. And the Pixel 4a also sets up a headphone jack, huzzah, as well as NFC support for your Google Pay shenanigans, but unfortunately, there is no micro SD support to expand the onboard storage. And as a bit of a heads up as well, the Pixel 4a 5G is occasionally known to drop below that £400 price point as well, so keep an eye out for that. I believe the last time we did that was Valentine's Day, and this just offers a bit of a performance boost as well as that 5G support, although it isn't quite as beautifully compact as the standard 4a. A strong rival to the Pixel 4a is the OnePlus Nord, which costs just a little more at the moment and boasts the more powerful Snapdragon 765G chipset with built-in 5G support. Online ultraviolence is unsurprisingly a thing of glory and wonder. Those games play with a perfect frame rate. And yeah, admittedly, the battery life isn't quite as strong on the OnePlus Nord as it is on some of the other smartphones in this best budget phones roundup, but the good news is at least you've got 30 watt fast charge to get you powered back up again in a jiffy. The OnePlus Nord isn't quite as refreshingly dinky as the Pixel, but at 6.44 inches, it's not huge, and you've gotta love that funky blue hue. The OLED screen is another stunner, boasting gorgeous contrast and punchy colours, plus you've got a smooth 90Hz finish. Definitely one of the best screens at this budget. The Nord's quad camera setup uses a 48 megapixel primary lens with Sony's IMX586 sensor, and while it's definitely not infallible, it does a decent job with photo quality in good conditions. Plus you also have a dual selfie cam up front, including an ultra wide option when you want to fit in lots of heads or some serious background action. And on top of all this loveliness, you've also got that highly enjoyable Oxygen OS experience. And like the Pixel 4a, you get the guaranteed couple of years of OS and security updates thrown in there as well. Although also, like the Pixel 4a, there is bug roll support for microSD memory cards to expand the storage. Now for less cash than both the Pixel and the OnePlus Nord, you can grab yourself Sony's Xperia 10 Mark II, which is definitely a considerably more affordable alternative to the Xperia 1 Mark II flagship phone. And in fact, it may drop again in price really, really soon because Sony has already launched the Xperia 10 Mark III, which we're expecting to emerge sometime around sort of summer 2021. The Xperia 10 Mark II boasts Sony's fantastic 21 by nine finish. So in other words, it's skinny and tall, but it's actually more compact than that Xperia 1 Mark II flagship. The gorgeous widescreen OLED display proves perfect for enjoying a blockbuster while you're tucked up under the duvet, or blasting through several games of Call of Duty when you really can't be asked with work or life in general. Although unlike the Nord, there is no 90Hz refresh here. That Snapdragon 665 chipset isn't as beefy as the 700 series platform stuffed inside of the Pixel and the Nord, but I did find that the Xperia 10 Mark II still coped fine with everyday life, while the all-day battery keeps you going even on the longest, craziest days. And music fans will really get a kick out of Sony's budget-friendly blower as well. You've got high-res audio support on there, as well as a choice of a headphone jack or Bluetooth streaming for your audio. 
And while the Xperia 10 Mark II's camera does falter in less than perfect lighting, you can grab some detailed snaps with accurate colour reproduction with minimal effort. Plus there's also an ultra wide angle and remarkably a telephoto lens on hand for when you need them. And as I briefly mentioned before, Sony's Xperia 10 Mark III is set to hit stores probably in around a couple of months or so, probably around June, July 2021. So if you can hold off a bit longer, you'll enjoy a performance upgrade and also a boost to the camera tech as well. Fingers crossed I'll be able to bring you an unboxing and a full review of that bad boy shortly. Now another fresh budget phone that just hit the UK in 2021 is the Oppo Find X3 Lite, which again offers a lot for the 300 80 pound asking price. It is plastic around back but Gorilla Glass 5 up front with a small range of space inspired colours on offer. And at 6.4 inches it's not as pleasingly compact as the Xperia but it's not an absolute whopper either. You do have to contend with a slightly messy colour OS software setup which not everyone will get on with or enjoy for sure but it does at least offer up plenty of options to customise your desktops and other bits. And sadly once again there is absolutely subtle support for micro SD memory cards which definitely sucks a whole load of sausage. The 6.4 inch AMOLED screen is another cracker though spaffing sharp visuals with crisp contrast to ride at your peepers, along with the 90Hz refresh to keep things smooth. The speakers are perfectly fine, but you also get a headphone jack as well for enjoying your tunes. And any gamers out there are well served by the Snapdragon 765G chipset backed by 8 gigs of RAM, which can blaze through all the usual titles, complete with a dedicated gaming mode for giving you an edge over those filthy school kids and their obnoxiously youthful reactions. You've got full 5G support here, you've got all day battery life, and you've even got 65 watt fast charging support if you need to give a bit of a boost at short notice. And the whole package is rounded off with a 64 megapixel primary shooter which is well up to the task of capturing everyday family shots and home movies. Now if your number one priority is performance then you'll also be well tempted by the brilliant Poco F3. Just 329 bob buys you this big old brick here which may look about as sexy as a dead fish in stockings but it packs some incredible specs for that budget price. You got Xiaomi's MIUI launcher in a slightly pockified form on the F3 and yeah it can be a little bit janky in places for sure but it does offer a more stock Android experience than ever before and chucks in a whole buttload of bonus features on top of that regular Android experience. Features like that nifty all encompassing control centre that I really can't get enough of. But it is the Snapdragon 870 chipset that really stands out in this budget lineup, offer an impressive grunt for gaming. You can even run the mighty memory guzzling Genshin Impact on high detail settings with only the occasional Wii judder for sure, helped along definitely by that dedicated coolant tech. And no worries as far as connectivity goes as well because you've got full 5G on this bad boy as well as a good bit of Wi-Fi 6 support, huzzah huzzah. Poco has packed in a 6.67 inch OLED screen with 120Hz max refresh and full HD plus resolution, although the sheer size of this screen means that images aren't as crisp as some rivals, but colours are proper poppy and on vivid mode those vibrant movies and photos will absolutely knock your socks off. And while there was no HDR streaming support on the likes of Netflix on the Poco F3 when I shot my review, that has subsequently been added. Thankfully, unfortunately you still don't get a headphone jack on the Poco F3, good luck adding that in an update. The stereo speaker setup isn't anything to scream and shout about, but at least the Bluetooth connectivity was absolutely fine during my testing. Gotta say though, the 4000 mAh battery was often running on dregs come the evening time. I did run out completely on one or two occasions while using the Poco F3 and also the 33 watt fast charger, while not bad by any means, is beaten by some rivals such as the Oppo in this roundup. But that's the last of my grumbling because I really enjoyed my time with the Poco F3, including that 48 megapixel main camera, which can even deal with hyperactive Wii subjects like this little person off her tits on Haribo. Now my final recommendation in this roundup of the best budget smartphones that cost under £400 is Samsung's Galaxy A52 5G, although this only just sneaks in with a price point of 399 Admittedly, the design of the A52 5G does little to excite or arouse, but at least you can pick up the phone in Samsung's slightly over-enthusiastically titled Awesome Blue, if you prefer brighter hues. And it's water and dust resistant, just like Sony's Xperia 10 Mark II. Samsung fans will certainly enjoy the feature-packed One UI experience that you get here on the Galaxy A52 5G, which isn't too dissimilar at all to what you'll find on the S21 flagship phones. And Sammy has commendably assured Galaxy A52 owners that they will enjoy three years of OS updates and four years of security updates. So that's them covered for the foreseeable, although I am expecting those update frequencies to drop off somewhat towards the end of that tenure. The 6.5 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen gets a thumbs up, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus visuals complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop, although you can opt for a more natural output in those display settings. 
Definitely a good in for your Netflix and Disney Plus and all that good stuff, despite the lack of HDR streaming support. And rather unbelievably as well, the Galaxy A52 5G offers up a headphone jack, microSD support for expanding the storage, and NFC support for your contactless payments as well, a tri-factor that's surprisingly hard to find at this sort of price point. Although I've got to admit, I didn't get on too well with the Galaxy A52 5G's slightly janky fingerprint sensor. There is full 5G support, as the name kind of suggests, thanks to the Snapdragon 750G chipset, which unfortunately doesn't offer anywhere near the level of performance of the Poco F3 and some other rivals here, but it is fine for simple shooters like Call of Duty and PUBG. And no issues with that 4500mAh battery either, that kept me going all day long, every day, though the 15 watt bundle charger is rather lethargic when it comes back to refilling the bugger. And Samsung's feature-packed camera is respectable, if not brilliant, often struggling with moving subjects, so good luck convincing and the wins to hold bloody still for more than two seconds. And that right there is my full roundup of my favourite, the best budget smartphones you can buy right now in 2021 for under £400. But as I mentioned before, these are all smartphones that I personally tested out and reviewed myself right here on Techspert. I don't like to recommend things that I've personally fondled and played around with myself to discover all their little foibles and other bits that might be lurking under the surface. But if I've missed out your own personal favourite budget smartphones, definitely feel free to call me a dum-dum in the comments and let me know which one I missed out. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.